God. <laughs> nah. Wasn't that was an E, wasn't it? Yeah, but I'm doing an D. Why? Can't sing it high anymore? I can, but yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Laugh, funny, funny. You got to feel it and laugh. Funny, funny. It's all right. <laughs> laugh. Funny, funny, you forgot funny the world. You got to live. Mark. Funny, funny people live. There funny, he is. Funny, funny. <laughs> Mark, uh, Tim, my brother Mark. Mark, my friend Tim. Hi, Mark. Glad to meet you. I don't see you. I don't see you. I mean, I see you guys, but I don't have a camera on my end. But it doesn't matter. There's a little picture of me in the middle of the thing there with my wife. Hello, Tim McCoy here. I am in the zone. And back in October of 2019, I had an interview with Brett Hudson of the Hudson Brothers. And just two weeks ago, I received a message from Brett saying, Hey, got to lay some info on you about a Hudson Brothers thing. So today I have with me all the Hudson Brothers, Bill, Mark, and Brett with some groovy new words of wisdom. So podcasts everywhere, put your legs together for the Hudson Brothers. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Timmy, for doing this. Seriously. Uh, it, this is the first time, by the way, we've interviewed together in... 40 years? We are gathered today because the information that I received from Brett was something was going on. And uh, he said, promote this as much as you want. So I put the word out that this was going to happen. And you would not believe how flooded I got with emails and messages going, what's up? Feel free to tell us what is happening now. Well, I think all the letters are from lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, we, we, we decided we're going to, we haven't performed together in 43 years, and we decided, uh, what the hell, let's, let's, let's do it. Let's just perform together. We haven't uh, done that in a long time. I know we were really good when we did it 43 years ago, so we're going to go out and uh, have some fun. Now, did a while back, uh, you um, released a Best Of album, and uh, right after that, you re-released an album you did in 78 at the Chateau, and I do believe yeah. that the last thing you recorded was a acoustic version of Rendezvous. Yeah. I yeah, love that's, that, that's the last thing we did, I think. And I love that We're, version. Yeah, me too. I, me too. I, I, I thought it was uh, it was different, but it still had the same sort of groove to it. That was the last time we recorded together, was 1994, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, uh, but you're going to get together, all three of you, to perform. Is it going to be live? Is it going to be on the internet? It's going to be it's going to be both. It's going to be live, and we're also going to stream it. Uh, for people that can't make it to where we're performing, they'll be able to stream it, uh, our live performance. And it, it's also going to be a, uh, this is Bill, it's also going to be, uh, it's sort of like an evening with. I mean, we're going to be, we're going to tell stories and show clips of things that people have never seen, like the videos that we took back in like 19, what was it, 72, 72 or something? Yeah. Wow. To get, that got us a television show. And we're going to talk about how songs were done. We're going to talk about personal things. We're going to have a Q&A period in the, in the show and play a lot of new material, too, other than like Rendezvous and So You Are a Star. And Mark wrote Living on the Edge for Aerosmith, and we're going to probably do that. So that would be – that's a cool song. Awesome. So it's really going to be sort of like uh, – it's sort of like a biography. We're going to show pictures of us from the time we were little kids all the way up through present day throughout the show so that people get a, a, an inside look at really what we were and then became and now what we are. You know, because a lot of the things that we were on television were a far cry from what <laughs> we really are. We're, we're basically musicians. And we didn't know about the television thing, even though it was fun. We had a great time and, and all that. We were serious musicians and songwriters, and that's what we want to do. We want to go out there and do that, and we're going to let all of the people that followed us in the past and those that might be curious in the present to, to you know, come on over and you know, give a listen. 
Do we have a location of where this is going to be yet? No. Yeah, we're doing it. At, we're doing it at a strip club in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no. I opened the show with my Chippendale dance. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, we don't know yet. We we have there are venues that we that are there and available, and what we're going to. So we don't know yet, but what we are going to do, we have a website being made right now. We're going to, you know, get in touch with all of the people that follow us and all of the people that don't, and and get it out there to announce what and when it's going to be. We're we're trying to hit October, but I don't know. <laughs> Why is Mark waiting? Is it, he I, has something to say? I think. I can. What's that? Say Go again. I, I I just wanted to say that now that we're in the cocktail hours of our lives. It's amazing when you get older how much the truth means. And before when you're an act, it's, oh, I'm the zany one, oh, I'm the romantic one, and all that stuff that they print. But this is going to give us a chance to really admit who we were, who we are, and who where we might be going from here. And the best part about that, you know, when you get older, you don't have to be full of crap anymore. Just look at us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I rest my <laughs> So it's a matter of telling that kind of truth, and I think an audience would love to know that. I don't think they get enough of that with all of the other people that are out there. It's a publicist, and it's someone telling them what to say and how to look. I think this time it's going to be what we really are, and that's really important to me anyway. And I think that the audience also has matured with you, uh, because uh, even after you've ended... Uh, Mark, you went on to do a thing with uh, Joan Rivers. You were the band director there. Yeah. And uh, you're doing the Laurel Canyon group, I think. Crosby, Stills, and Nash tribute. That's, be That's beautiful. Brown, so I had to get two other guys. But uh, <laughs> it's fun. I'm basically doing it for fun. It's not even really about the money, you can tell by my outfit. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, all, and also what we want to do, we want to do a tribute band of the Hudson Brothers, but we want to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I so guess that would be the best way to go. A you know. ourselves. A tribute to the Hudson Brothers starring the Hudson Brothers. The No Bullshit yeah. Show, Ooh. yeah. It, it, you know, it's funny because what Bill brought up is true. Even though the image that we had back then, I mean, you know, it was also a different time. I mean, we were really good and still really good friends with Cher. And Sonny and Cher were not necessarily what you saw on television. In fact, they weren't that at all in real life. And that's what television did back then. But Bill was right. We always have been and probably always will be serious musicians and singers and songwriters. But, but I wouldn't throw the comedy out the window either. Besides being I three can't. fans and Marx Brothers fans, and we're pretty funny, too, when we need to be. So the music... Well, being funny is pretty hit and miss. Well, the fu thing about funny is like when we were doing the show, it was all this planned bullshit, like, you know, they were writing for the Osmonds. And, you know, it, we just, it didn't work for us because our comedy, our funny is a natural thing and it's almost improv. We, yeah. we, we, we kind of just take it as it, we, it, it comes. And we weren't allowed to do that on television. I remember our first show, we, they were giving us all these bad jokes to do, you know, like Donnie and Marie and all those things, and then the Sonny and Cher, even though Sonny and Cher's jokes were great because of, they, they were married and everything. But we were given this stuff, made us sound like we were like, you know, Mormons. And the truth of the matter is, is that we, we were bought, what? There's nothing wrong with Mormons. They're okay too. <laughs> I love Mormons. I'm gonna I'm gonna move to I'm gonna move to Utah because at the end of the world I want to be with them. They've got everything stored. Anyway, the, 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 what happened was that in our in our in our first <laughs> but that's the first funny thing Bill has said in 44 years. Back, <laughs> you brought a tear to my eye. <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that we got out on stage at CBS Television Center. And we started saying these jokes that were on the cue cards, and they were so bad. And the audience, you know, they were sitting there like, you know, photographs. And so we went into just ad libbing what we would normally do in front of, uh, on a stage or at a party or in front of our family. And we went on for like 20 minutes, and it was, audience went nuts. The director comes down, who was also the director of Sonny and Cher, he comes down and he goes, You guys, this was absolutely incredible. The audience went nuts and everything. 
They called us back to our dressing rooms, and Chris Beard and Alan Bly were the producers, and they walked in, and we thought we were going to get all this praise. They actually slapped us, like the literally person. on our heads, slapped us. And had that happened today, I would have knocked their fucking teeth down. Their <laughs> I'm not kidding. They slapped us and made us go back out and do the bad stuff. Yeah. And the truth of the matter is, is that the audience that was watching us was connected to us as people. And the one character that the audience really, really, and I'm talking about from our hardcore audience to rock and rollers like uh, the Black Crows and Aerosmith and all these bands, loved this character that Brett came up with called Chucky Margolis. Uh -huh. And that was a giant hit on that show other than the fact that they kind of liked us because, you know, we were we, we spent as much time trying not to do the dialogue that they were giving us. So this show that we want to do is really about who we are, what we, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda done, but didn't. And we, really and we, didn't talk any, but, you know, we really didn't know any better. At that point, no. they tapped our teeth, they straightened our hair, they stuffed our pants, and then we became an act. <laughs> well, they stuffed your pants. Oh, I just wanted to go on record. Yeah, but I'm a good kisser. That's good. That is good. And by the way, now I don't have any hair straight. So let's let's get on. With it. You and me well, both, the, man. In the show that we're gonna do, we're gonna. Uh, we grew up. Our, my mom and her two sisters, Aunt Dee and Aunt Dell. My mom's name was Eleanor. They sang three-part harmony like the Andrews sisters. They were just incredible. So we were around this family who played music all the time from Sinatra and Perry Como and Andy Williams and and, and, and all, yep. you know, all these great, and then my mom, who was young, she was only in her late 20s, got into the Everly Brothers and, and, and Carl Perkins and all those guys, and so we grew up with that. And then Elvis came out, which changed our lives. But the, but the truth of the matter is, is that in the show, we're gonna show pictures of our mom, pictures of us with our mom, our aunts, our grandmothers, and sort of do the lineage of where we came from and what it was all about, which basically led us to want to entertain. All we were doing was entertaining our families. Our family would come down on the weekends from Tacoma, Washington and Portland. There'd be 30, 50 people in a small two bedroom, one bath house. My brothers and I would basically entertain them. <laughs> yeah. Dance, you know, and, and, and we just grew up with it. And now since we're telling the truth, we can actually admit that all of our aunts had mustaches. Well, they're Italian. And the uncles, they're too. Supposed... Yes, that's true. The uncles did. The weird thing is, 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 is what, what I really like about it is, is we are actually just, for the first time, I think, ever, we just get to be who we really are as brothers, as performers, as singers, as artists, and not, uh, not sort of round the edges. And the comedy is going to come naturally. from a natural place. But what we really want, we want to, we want to get out there and and play like we really play. Yeah. And and the new songs that we've written, and the and the old ones, a couple, a few of them, and the songs that Mark's had some success with, like "Living on the Edge" and "The Reason for Celine Dion" and all that stuff. We're gonna just lay it all out there, and talk about what we've been doing when we weren't the Hudson Brothers. You know, I my company produced "Father of the Bride." At, you know, and all that stuff, and just all kinds of stuff. Brett did all kinds of television. I did the music for him, and. So we've been active, it's just that we haven't been together, and we thought, what the hell, let's do it. Well, the other thing yeah. is, you know, because we are in the cocktail hours of our lives, thank God the three of us are still on the planet, so if we're going to do it, now surely would be a good time to say, it's those three guys that are three brothers, and this is their life. What it was, what it is, what it isn't, and not be afraid to say the truth. Yeah, we're going to talk about it. We're, we're going to talk about everything. I want. We're going to do a Q and A. I don't care what they ask, and we'll, you know. And we'll, and what's great about that is when they ask questions, we get comedy out of that too. Always. When we're talking, they'll say something, and I'll say something, and then Brett will put me down, or Mark will say, "No, no, no, let me handle this. I'm the king," and he'll do it, and he'll tell, you know. But I must admit, in front of my brother, Mark's a great storyteller. He's I, he makes me laugh, which. Is not easy to do. So, and Brett makes me really laugh. But I Brett, hope Brett you really. This is a, what? No, it comes down to. I, I I was thinking about our past recently. All we ever really cared about was making each other laugh. We even did, on stage. Yes, that's what I mean. Even even during our act, all we cared about was making each other laugh. That to me, 
cannot be messed with. I think that when not yeah. sees that, they see and feel the relationship, and they yeah. fall in love with us as a family, and the way that we do put each other down. And we never really mean it to be hurtful. It's just sort of smart asses talking to each other. And in, in my, yeah, basically, in my old age, I go between Gandhi and Gotti. And the Gandhi's, oh, peace and love to everybody. The Gandhi, the, the, the Gandhi's my, I'll drive my car up your ass. If <laughs> Maybe I was over. The, I apologize. The other thing, too, is that, is that the, 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 the comedy comes out of real life situations. We talk about our family. Our family was a dynamic. My grandfather, who, you know, was died for 30 years, and, you know, with. <laughs> You know, but, he had, you know, but wait, it got to the point, it's a swear to God truth, where we were so used to my grandfather fake dying, if he would just fall on the floor, and we would just step over him, like go in the kitchen, because he, he, he fake died every day. Well, there was also funny, because when he really died, Mark and I were up in, what, Canada. Seattle or Canada. Canada. Canada? Yeah, we were up in Canada, and Brett called us and said, you guys better get down here, Papa's not doing very well. So we get down there. We're all in the bedroom with my grandmother and my grandfather who's in bed and the three of us are there and my mom and everything. And my and Papa passes away. And Tessie kind of sitting at the side of the bed and she sort of says out loud, she goes, my God, Papa died on Good Friday. And then Brett said, well, he has another chance on Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so even in death. You know, our, it, it, it's kind of how our family was, too. Well, our dad, uh, who we actually met when I was 13, but we became really good friends. And he, I didn't talk to him for about eight months, and he called me and said uh, said he had uh, Lou Gehrig's disease. And I said, does that mean you're going to play for the Yankees? <laughs> and he, he burst out laughing and said something I'll never forget. He goes, I wouldn't expect anything other than that from you. Wow. And, and the one that I would just tell one dad story. It, yeah, uh, maybe this will be in the act. I don't know if my brothers are hearing this. Entries. When Bill married Goldie Hawn, I was afraid to fly like a white knuckler. I had to get so drunk and so messed up on any pill that I could get in the plane. So my father says to me, who I had basically not much of a relationship with, why don't you just drive back there with me? And I went, okay. So we get into his red car. We make it to someplace in Arizona, and we're pulled over by the cops. And whenever I go to Arizona, I think it'd be about Bill being chased by the mafia, dropping a car <laughs> on, or my dad doing something wrong. So all of a sudden, we get pulled over by the cops, and we fit this description of two guys that just murdered someone. <laughs> I mean, we did all that. And I remember buying these little cigarette loads. If you have a cigarette, you can push it down the cigarette, and when you take the puff, boom, it explodes. So I figured... After my dad left us as children, I would pay him back on this trip. So he'd go to the smoke and he'd just go, boom, and ah, like this. He goes, what the hell was that? And I denied it. Daddy, I don't know what you're talking about. We make it someplace <laughs> and the city all of a sudden, boom, he goes, it's you. I'm going to kill you. He threatening me. Dad, it wasn't me. It's just, it must be some bad. <laughs> All the way back to Washington, D.C., his, his cigarettes were exploding. <laughs> And finally, it's the day of the wedding. A, a Jewish wedding, a Catholic wedding, a rabbi and a priest. And I figured, I'm here now, and I got my brothers to protect me. I'm going to show Dad what a real <laughs> bastard he was. And I loaded this one cigarette like a Looney Tune cartoon. So he goes, yeah, well, it's a big day. But when this exploded, it was like, oh, black face. Oh, I ran to where the press was, outside. So that he couldn't kill me. Oh, Lord. <laughs> that, and he virtually it was sin. But that was my sort of, yeah, thinking about leaving my family again, you fuck. <laughs> See, my, we, my did stuff like, we did stuff like that all the time. We did stuff like that all the time, even to people we didn't know. And I, if, if we did it now, we'd be in jail. Like, we painted that guy, the guy that owned uh, Studio 3 in Vancouver, B.C., we painted his whole office, his phones inside his drawers, purple. And the carpet. And the carpet. Yeah. And left it. We did that now, we'd be... Uh, well, but he came, his name was Ralph Harding. He came back and saw it and actually laughed and was... At, he actually said, I'm really sort of 
honored by this that the Hudson Brothers painted my entire office, desk, <laughs> telephones, and carpet purple. Yeah. And thank you, and went get recorded. Yeah. You see, but those, those days are over now. If you look at the Marx Brothers and you look at some of those, Richard Pryor, George Carlin, you can name those guys, that, that Lenny Bruce, they pushed the edge all the time. We weren't sure we were pushing any edge other than making each other laugh. Like that time exactly. we had that girl out a window for Bill. Excuse me? Uh, yeah. For who? It was me. Yeah, it was you. And we couldn't get her through the window. <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. I won't even go there because in case my my grandkids could hear this. She ain't I'm happy. She's just a friend. When she lost a lot of weight. She's good. <laughs> <laughs> didn't want to say it. I didn't want to say it. Yeah. But as soon as we, as soon as we solidify, I mean, go, yeah, we're going to do it there. Uh, we will announce everything. I'll call you back, Tim. You can announce where we're going to be and the website and all that stuff. And I'll get it out there because I think it's important that we do this for a number of reasons because performers like, I hate to say it, but like us or our group. Our, Why would you hate to say it? Well, because it's, it, what, because we're, we're, you know, they're dropping like flies. Well, it's, that has nothing to do with it. Yeah, I want to do it one more time before I drop. Uh, okay. Well, your ball many years ago. Just one. I'm that, when that second one goes down, I'm going to be a <laughs> When I walk down the street, it looks like I have a, a marriage train. I knew you got him. Thanks, brother. <laughs> that was funny. Anytime. Oh, my wow. God. Here, I'm going to do this because uh, I, I said something to Brett about this once before. Where did oh, yeah. Vert come from? Uh... uh Charlie Callis, uh, old comedian from back in the day, used to do it at the all the time, and our other friend Ted Ziegler would do. Uh, that's where all, they all came from. People that we worked with. Now Callis, Callis but, played the vampire in uh, Hysterical, right? Yes, yes, he did. And, and that's he also he was. We, we had to take to, so many takes because he kept making us laugh. Like we knew what the script yeah. was. It's a vampire, and he was going to. He would start doing the stuff, and we couldn't keep it a straight face. He was incredible. Uh, Brett Hudson recording take one. Here we go. Right. <laughs> where did that come from? Where did that, where did that come from? Is that uh, is that uh, based on uh, Charlie Callis too? Or? No, I, no, I think Go was more uh, Beatle related. Like when they would do those television shows, they'd go, and here we go. Here we go. Thanks for coming. Here we go. Yeah, you, did, you did that a lot in offshore television, too. Oh, all the time. Yeah. All I was, the such, time. I was <laughs> such a big fan. Offshore was, well, was 13. Go ahead, Mom. Offshore was 13 episodes. And if you notice that Elvis movie with Tom Hanks. Yes. I think called The Elvi, and I personally think they stole it from me. Because on that, what? What? Let me say this. I wasn't in offshore television, but I loved it, and I still do. There are some incredible, uh, just incredible things in there. And here's an example of my brothers doing this show, which was a, a decade ahead of its time at least, and these dumbasses suits in Hollywood just didn't see it. They just couldn't quite wrap their head around it. And if you really look on what's been going on with comedy and all that stuff, not only is it on the glib side today, but offshore television had its glibness to it, but it was acted perfectly. Mark's Elvi, Brett did this thing called Crow Magnum P.I. where he was this <laughs> private detective but he was made up like a crook. They did this thing called the beaver trappers they did all this wonderful stuff that really has never seen the light of day so I, I intend I would like to get that out again and you know period just get it out there we're going to put it on our website we're going to offer all these things down the line yes. to people if they want to see it and, and, and you know download it buy it whatever they want to do and we'll take it in trade if they're good looking and young but anyway uh, <laughs> no seriously we're going to put stuff out 
we did this one thing called the Hudson Brothers trying to be funny half hour, which was black and white, was real to real video. We rented the equipment on a Friday because we didn't have to return it to Monday. We stayed up for three days, and what we shot on that was what got us our television shows. And nobody's ever seen that. We've got footage of us when we were, Brett was like 11, and Mark was like, you know, Oh, just about 13 and I'm like 14 and we're playing it's all it's all the early stuff no one's ever seen all the things that they that has not all the things that nobody's ever seen and it tells a story uh, yeah. which is interesting which is the really, show will tell a yeah, story the show, yeah exactly yeah but we did Mark and I did stuff on after television that uh, well we actually got a cease and desist letter from all of the Beatles uh, <laughs> lawyers uh, and and they, they took stuff, uh, Mark, we're Italian, so Mark and I did the Beatleinis, which was, uh, they said we couldn't air and stuff. We did, a, we just, we didn't make fun of everybody, but we made well, fun what of were some of the lines. You might some of the lines of uh, the Beatleinis was, uh, she came in through the bathroom window, I threw her out the fucking front door. <laughs> Mark, what was you say hello, I say get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and then and then they did the, Jew, they did the Jewish Beach Boys. Did the Jewish Beach Boys, which was Help Me Wander. Uh, and then we did, oh, we did the Jewish Bee Gees, which was, how do you mend the broken heart at cost? <laughs> Saturday night, I think I've got a fever, and I started to choke. I started, I started to choke. We did all these things, and, and they wouldn't let us air it, air it. They said that we couldn't air it, which I couldn't figure out. They, it was funny. When we did the Black Beatles, which with Jimmy Walker, by the way, he played John, uh, John Lennon. They, uh... Well, today we'd be considered, they'd say you're a racist, which is a bunch of bullshit, too, that's going on in this country. People are racist. Because, you know, we, 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 we can't say anything. People are just uh, wound comedian. too tight. They're yep. just wound way too tight, man. Yeah. Oh, my God, Tim. Yeah, way too tight. And look at all the comedians that won't work colleges anymore. It's like, what? That was the mainstay for comedy back in the day. But, yeah. It, and, but, Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, no, it's just it just it, it, it really got under my skin when they would stop. They stopped us from from doing stuff. It was funny. It wasn't racist. It wasn't. We weren't putting anybody down. We were making fun of 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 everybody and everything. And comedy is all based on tragedy, as we all know. But it's also based on stereotypes. Yep. You you can't get away from that. You're, they've they've. You, so it went from the inability to use the fodder for comedy, which was pretty much PG. And these comedians had to go all the other way, and every other word is a swear word or a yeah. fuck or a bitch, or they're talking about things that are, are funny, but in a shocking way, in a shock value. And I think this country, in my opinion, I don't care what party you belong to, needs some really good, funny, wholesome comedy about everything about what's going on i mean you can make fun of everybody from trump to pelosi you can make fun of musk to what's his name the, the guy with the adolf zuckerberg yeah adolf zuckerberg <laughs> yeah you it, it, it they've tied our hands and we're going to untie our hands and we're going to just say it and they can call us whatever or whatever they want i don't personally don't care yeah that's what we have the first amendment for it's a it's a to protect uh, us from the government controlling us as far as the people go you don't like it fuck you well exactly. that's true and we if you really think about it our whole constitution and is is predicated on the liberty of the individuals amen and it's really interesting to me because in the late 60s when I was protesting against the war in Vietnam and the colleges were all about free speech and all about freedom and individual liberty and the same college campuses what 50 years later are the ones that are trying to, to, to stop, stop free speech it makes no sense safe spaces because you know Donald Trump ran for president so they need a teddy bear and a blanket to go fucking sit in a room and go I don't know what's gonna happen well, what's gonna happen is go vote and vote him out if you don't like him amen don't cry about it, you babies <laughs> it's true, man. I have no patience for that shit. Can you hand me my blanket? <laughs> hey, tomorrow happens. <laughs> tomorrow happens to be Ringo Ringo Starr's birthday. <laughs> Brett, that was good. Good timing. What, no, I, oh, I I used to be a comedian. Tomorrow is Ringo's birthday. How old is he now? Eighty. It should be what? Eighty-two? No. No, I think eighty. No, eighty-three or eighty-four, isn't he? No. They're still doing. 
Wait, no, he's ten years. I'm I'm seventy three, so he's eighty three or yeah. eighty four, yeah. And he's still doing. You know what the weird part about it is? It, I I don't resent it, but I don't like how age means that you're over with, or that they put something like Gladys Knight to me is still one of the greatest singers right now. As was Tina Turner. Got- Forgetting, with all respect to Beyonce and all of the other ones, those people could still sing even if they were ninety. Yeah. Same thing yeah, happened well, yeah. with a rock band. Well, Aerosmith, they're one of the only original member bands out there. And Steven Tyler can still kick some major ass when he's singing. Amen. I, I, I love Gladys Knight. She's, I would, I'd marry her. Easy, you've married enough. Yeah, it's just zero. <laughs> no, I'm done marrying. I, I, I've, I've actually given, given up every risk relationships in general. They always turn out to be the same. You're either taking out the garbage or going to a mall. What was that, yeah, Mark? What's, but maybe it's your taste, you know. Yeah, we, all, we get the way. Uh, we pick. Mark and I, are, Mark and I are both single, and Bill is isn't. Uh, he's Mark and I are both married, and Bill's single. But you need a SAG card to marry. To, see, here's the problem with Bill. It's your choice. You know who did he marry? Goldie, and then he married Cindy. What's next? Well, yeah, but the Come SAG on. is his testicles. <laughs> well, they think yeah. get old. Whenever we're playing, so. I want you in the front row, brother. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> oh Lord! You know, I've also no, wondered, you know, there are certain there are certain words that are medical that are funny. Like the word testicle is funny no matter what context you want to use it in. Well, you want some trivia? Do you know what avocado uh, what avocado stands for? Hmm. Pe- testicle. That's what they named it for because of the size of the pit. That's how. That's how I'm a reservoir of useless information. Put that in your pit bag. There you go. <laughs> Internet lawyer. Internet lawyer. Yes. <laughs> Tell us about that, Mark. My lips are sealed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> you know the interesting thing is what I'm looking forward to, because we virtually just did a backing vocal session for Dick Monda, who was our original producer, who produced Laugh Funny Funny. And he was the one that sort of found us musically. And we hadn't done any sort of work like that in years. And Wait, he, Mark, 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 Mark. He's also was Daddy Dewdrops who wrote Chicka Boom. Ah, yeah, don't right. you just don't love it? Just yeah. love it, Chicka Boom, Chicka Boom, Chicka Boom. Chicka boom. Yeah. But we went and sang, and as soon as we were in front of a microphone, we started doing as usual. We started making fun of each other. We started doing all of that stuff that I loved about the Hudson Brothers because no one's feelings were hurt, but we still were taking. It's kind of Liverpudlian. I, I always tell that John Lennon story when he first met Frank Zappa. They said, John and Yoko are here, and he walked in, and there was Frank Zappa, and John Lennon said, Well, you're not as ugly as I thought you would be. <laughs> now, some people could take that wrong. That's the part of it that I love. And I'm, when we sang these backing vocals, we were good. I was shocked. I went home later, and I was shocked because the harmonies, still there. The blend, still there. That's what I'm looking forward to, this new adventure, because we get to do that again, and we haven't in so long. You know, that's what I loved more than anything. When I started listening to you guys, uh, this was back when you were the New Yorkers. And I wow. and I was just a kid, and I'm listening, and and I was saying to everyone at that time, it's like just listen to the harmony. Don't you know yeah. you can you can pay attention to the in- instrumentation, but the way that you meld so well this living running gestalt that was just yeah. absolutely on mark. Yep, yeah. no no que- no question about it. And because my brother Bill was having an affair with our manager. <laughs> <laughs> There is a, but <laughs> I found a picture of us with Mr. Bailey. I mean, I, I found a picture of us, yeah, in oh Vegas, Lord. just before he bid it. Really? So, send it to you. Well, the other thing, too, is that, you know, you listen to groups. It's the one thing I miss the most is singing with my brothers. Because when you sing together... Forget the instruments. When you're singing together, there's a connection. You listen to the Bee Gees, the Beatles, 
you know, uh, uh, the Beach Boys, the Andrews Sisters, I mean, all the people that really sing harmonies. And I was listening to some of our stuff the other day because we're going to go out again, and I just wanted to hear it. And, you know, our, our harmonies were u as unique to us as the Beach Boys were to them or the Beatles to them or the Osmonds or whatever you want or the Jacksons. Our stuff was really cool, and I got to give it to Mark. Mark does some things <clears throat> with vocals that nobody does, sounds that he'll put through this beautiful harmony that aren't really, we're not really singing, we're sort of making this melodic sound. And when, you, when I listened to it, I thought, wow, man, that stuff was really cool. And if you really think about it, who's out there harmonizing today? Yeah, Nobody. You, yeah, you don't hear it at it, all. It, no, you don't hear harmonies. You don't hear backgrounds. You don't hear shake it up, baby. Now shake it up, baby. You don't hear repeats. You don't hear that stuff anymore. You don't hear guitar solos anymore. Mm -mm, no. you know, everybody's you know when, too when, cool for it. When they asked me to work with Hanson before their Nards dropped, I didn't. I didn't want. I mean, I said. I did that with my brothers. I was going to go, that was then, this is now. I, I had that bad attitude. But I said, okay, I'll meet them. And they walked into my, my my office, my studio. And as soon as I saw them, there was a feeling of, don't mess with me, buddy, because we can really harmonize. And as soon as I strummed the guitar, they were, it was like angels. And that's a family dynamic that is difficult. Bee Gees had it too. You can name yeah. it. It's difficult to achieve. It's almost either God-given or in a bloodline. But as soon as I heard those Hanson kids, I went, okay, they got it. And when we did this the other week, singing for someone, I went, we still have it. The engineer that, the, that engineered that, he wasn't there when he did it. Uh, I called Mondo the other day, and he told me that he played it for his grandson, who engineers his stuff. And he said the weirdest thing. When he heard our backgrounds, he said, that's immaculate which is a very strange adjective to use. But I, thinking of what we did, I, I know what he means. It, it, it is something in the, in the, in the DNA, and the throat. There, it has to be. Just listen to the Bee Gees. And that, it, they're, it's also a, it's, it's a, there's a fun within a family, because you're not just in front of a microphone harmonizing. You spent a Christmas together or a Thanksgiving, or you've gone to a funeral, or a wedding, and all of that stuff that we always try to make it seem that it doesn't count, it all counts, and it goes inside of you and stays there, and sometimes it just has to come out in a note. And there I will add the <laughs> snare drum and the cymbal. Ba -dum no, that you see, I love making Brett laugh, because Brett... Brett Brent is the funniest man that I've ever known. And I think Bill would say the same thing. But now and then, when I get up to the plate, like Babe Ruth, and I point to center field, get yeah. out of the way. Yeah, <laughs> well, I've, I've said it a thousand times, and I'll say it again. In my passing, you will not be funny, because you steal every joke from moi. That's, 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 <laughs> yeah, but let me say something else about Brett. He either, <laughs> he either hits big, or it's a complete bomb. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no in between with Brett. He's either going to say something and his timing is macking and the words that he says, or he'll say something and there's no ending to it. And Mark and I sit there and go, "Okay, next." That's all right, you know. Uh, well, but, uh, but but that's how that. Uh, but what we get out of that, take a shot, is we take a <laughs> shot at each other, mm -hmm. even in front of people. When we bomb, we make fun of each other in front of people so they <laughs> don't feel bad about recognizing that we bombed. We <laughs> we think for younger. We, and all three of us, we'd all be trying to pick up the same girl. And I must admit, like the three musketeers, whatever brother that girl liked, the other two would sort of bow out and work out and get out of the way. But we had a rule in our family that, <coughs> that we could throw water in each other's faces anytime we wanted to. And the person that takes the water is not allowed to swear, not allowed to get angry. It just, you know, Bill would go like, yeah, and then what? Oh, and you choke, and then just come back to reality and keep going. And the girls are looking at us like, are these guys out of their fucking mind? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take a Can't sip here. That. As it Mark is, I'm going to take my sip too. Mm. Go for it. Caffeine and cannabis, I'm telling you, works perfect.
<laughs> hey, it does. Yes, it, it does. does. And who am I to argue with that law? <laughs> it's not any worse than drinking. You know, whatever you, whatever you, that is drinking. better than drinking. And if you know anything about the medical aspects of cannabis, it's real important that people get into that and understand the use of it for uh, for medical problems. They're finding, they're finding use for, uh, you know, the mushrooms and all that stuff, yeah. which I think is great. For you know, uh, uh, you know, it, we're divided in so many ways about that stuff. You know, we've had a war on drugs for God knows decades, and 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 they keep getting worse. We've got their fentanyl coming in over the border. They need to stop that shit for sure. Yeah. But pot, God, smoke it. And and Bill is Bill's now gonna about to start a company called Anal Shrooms, which is <laughs> mushrooms <laughs> that put in your sphincter. Right. And Mark will be the first victim. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Mark, he wants a very small mushroom. <laughs> uh, it, it, but I, I uh, having been like really sick and stuff like that and all the opiates they gave me when I had cancer, I, I learned real fast that uh, medical marijuana in all different forms, Marinol uh, and, and how you take it, really helps uh, if you're sick. We purchase I'm, I'm what? I'm I'm obsessing with anal shrooms. <laughs> you're, you're obsessing with anal, and you've got the village people in your throat. And, <laughs> and now he's the complete butt of every joke. That's all right. No, yeah, I, I, you're right, Tim. Though about about that, it it uh, it's it's remarkable if you know how to use it for medical. Well, reasons. and also, you know, when you really think about the divide that exists today. And let me relate it to show business. You couldn't sell all in the family today. Oh. You couldn't sell the Jeffersons today. That's correct. You couldn't. You, you know, they're editing the dumb ass morons at Disney. They're taking out classic aspects of 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 Disney films and the cartoons. I mean, the the animated features and stuff. They're tearing down statues. Our history is very important. Even when we were bad, even when we were fucking up, you know, slavery, you know, genocide of an entire indigenous people across this country for the sake of what? You know, the United the United States, and we just do what we did to the Indians. All of that stuff is part of our history, and we should learn from it, and we should not do it again. But you can't. You can't move forward unless you can actually openly talk about what actually and truthfully right. happened. And, and you know what Here. else? We found out that although we're Italian, we had a little bit of Native American Indian in us. So we drove to New Mexico to see the chief and find out our background. Bill goes in and goes, oh, great chief, tell me about my name. And he looked at Bill, and we were smoking peyote at the time. Mm. And he goes, when your father made love to your mother. He rolled her over and they broke. You are broken arrow. Ah, oh. and then Brick goes, what about me, old great chief? He goes, when your father made love to your mother on the plateau, a herd of buffalo ran by. You are running buffalo. And I went, great chief, what about me? He said, don't ask, plastic rubber. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you should have said, no, you blew your punchline. You should have said, don't ask broken rubber. There you go. No. He's right. Yeah. <laughs> See? <don't be> <laughs> so you're working on new songs. I heard you're working on new songs. Um, have you noticed a style difference? I mean, in the. Uh, uh, a generation or a couple of generations that have gone by that your style of writing music or performing is a little different than it was? I think if you're writing for somebody else, your style has to change to what and who they are. If you're writing song for you, there is no year, there is no, oh, here's my drum machine and all that stuff. <laughs> that was half of the problem is we all tried to change to be what's hip and therefore you're getting Paul McCartney doing a disco song or Rod Stewart and you can name them because they tried to be what was happening now and all you have to do is not to quote Shakespeare to thine own self be true be who you are and that's what it should be that's the template that I think all three of us 
try to live by. This is just what it is. Now, if they wanted the song for someone else, we could sit down and do that. But that's like work. Writing a song for writing a song is more for yourself. And if it works, great. You know, when I, I wrote Living on the Edge four years before I gave it to Aerosmith. And so it's like I wrote it because John Lennon was gone and nobody was saying anything mm -hmm. of instant karma. And imagine. And that was the first song that Aerosmith did that had sort of a political concept instead of love in an elevator or dude looks like a lady. There was more to it than that. And, and I think that's a God-given thing. And it's, it's like, he's very Van Goghian, but we're more like Vincent Van Gogh, fuck yourself. <laughs> so the reunion that's going to happen, um, how far down the line do you think this is going to be? A month? Two months? Six months? Uh, we're, 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 trying, we're trying to hit October. I, I don't know if we'll... we'll I, I, we won't know for another couple of weeks if we can make that date because we've got to set up the website. We've got to set up all these things which we're in the process of doing. So we're, but we're trying to make the in the first two weeks of October, which would be great. And yeah. if we can't make the first two weeks in October, we'll probably do January. January, yeah. you know. But I'd like to make October. And and the reason, my reasoning is, is because I don't like, I like to get things done immediately. I don't like to, you know, dick around with time and just if we're going to do it, let's do it and send it out to the people that might show up or download or stream or whatever the hell it is and let's do it it's it's it, 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 it's really the mechanics of getting it set up you know you got to get the guy to come and shoot the stream you got to mm -hmm. get the you know the website together it's all that stuff that that we're in the process of doing now but, but once we do, once we get that together and set a date we'll announce it the fish rots from the head and i think we are that fish and i, I think that we need to make sure that we are comfortable. In. Yes. For, yeah. the, the websites and the this. I'm talking about the three of us in a room. Exactly. Like, yeah. That's that's first first and, and then any young kid now. I mean, I can't cut and paste, so I don't, I'm not bad on computers. <laughs> but if we get a good website and we get a good PowerPoint behind us, that's going to be the the l least worry that we have because we want the vocal and the music performance to be there and then when we start talking to each other there might be a twinge of this is the direction we're going in but at any given time that direction can change completely and we're up for that but when we take it on the road uh each place that we play it's going to be different it's not going to be the same every place it's just not in our dna to do that we might play some of the same songs we might switch some out we might you know we're pretty uh improvisational like that which i love like mark said earlier or brett we we were just trying to make each other laugh on stage well no matter where we were whether it was doing the tonight show or 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 one of our shows whatever we were doing we looked at it like we wanted to have fun together and and i think that's what the people that really ended up liking us and even loving us got into they got into our the, they got into what we were actually doing we were being together and just messing around like three guys having some fun and we happened to be really good at singing and writing and all that stuff and they we've had i've had more people who after the shows were off the air would get call me or text me or write me or whatever saying I never realized really how good you were musically you know I mean and and neither did I and then I listened back and I go wow man that was great and we weren't playing to click tracks we weren't doing these things in section we were playing this stuff live and it was weird on television back in the day if you remember everybody you know lip synced nobody really played live and we got a lot of like bad response yeah. from a lot of people for that so we said no we're not going to lip sync anymore we're going to play live and even when we played live people thought we were lip syncing we did in concert and Monday was it midnight special we played live the tonight show the tonight and all show, that stuff. yeah yeah spontaneous is a good word because there's a direction yeah. for the go, but the, the spontaneous part of the Hudson Brothers we don't know what each other is going to say 
or a direction we're going to take it. And that's when Bill said, like improv, if one brother goes down that street, the other two will just show up and stay there until we need to move on from it. I think <laughs> yeah. that's a, from a comedic point of view. And I think, God willing, if the harmonies and the music is like, I remember it, it's going to really be fun. And you know what? You're always going to find people to hate you. You're always going to find people to make fun of you. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to happen. And you know what? That's. I have this thing that I might. I don't have a tattoo, but I'm going to get one that says SMB. Suck my ball. Got to be careful. Yeah, you got to be careful. Some might sneak up on you. You'll never know. We felt. We felt. Well, what the, happened was. Bill what was happened was. Bill was talking about you know, the television thing in sort of a negative way. But the one negative of that, where he's completely right, at that point, the monkeys were fake. The Partridge family mm -hmm. were fake. So all the TV acts became like, oh, it's those guys on television. We started out as a rock band that ended up on television. <laughs> well, not only that, but in those days, if you did television and you were serious musicians, you were shunned. And a prime example of somebody who was very successful musically as well as on television was John Denver. Rolling Stone, they all g gave him just a bad rap, and this guy was great. Yeah. Today, everybody and their mother wants to be on television in some commercial or their songs in some movie. So what happened with us is it was the opposite. We weren't fake. We were real. We are real musicians. But the television, the perception of us with H's on our chest and all that stuff, made it seem like we were as, as you know, plastic, plastic as everybody Man, else. Man, you're Yeah. Right, wait a minute. Before it's after, like that. MTV. It's like, was, MTV was the thing that said, "Now you can all do television," and then you get Duran, Duran, and blah blah blah, and they all showed up for it. We were there before that going, oh, you TV actor, comedy guys. Well, and had we been happening during MTV, it would have been all over. Yeah. We were meant uh, for MTV just a decade early. Yeah. You know, that, that, that was the problem Mary there. Mary me then. What was that, Mark? You what? I said Mary Tyler Moore would have married me then. Who would marry you? I'll <laughs> later. Okay. I just got divorced. Yeah. Here, here's the weird. Here's the the weird thing about about that, and and there, there's truth to it. However, it in hindsight, somebody asked me once. I think it might have been you, Tim. If I could change anything, would I change it? And it was no. Yes. Yeah. I, I even though we made some moves we shouldn't have made, but I would never go back and change what we did. I would have changed a lot of things. <laughs> I don't wear them, but oh, I would have changed a lot of things. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. I, I would I would make a lot I would make alterations in my personal life as well as in my professional life. Uh, you know, period. And we also will talk about that in the show. What what Bill said was right though because I don't remember what album it was, but Rolling Stone did an, uh, reviewed it and they raved about it and the last line I still have it somewhere said, "But don't buy this album. They're on television." Mm. Mm -mm. That that was a review. I think I sent that to you. That's that was. You, sad. We can't we can't look back at it, you know. Right. It, you know, I mean, it, it said you know, uh, Frank Sinatra. I did it my way. I've been a popper, a popper, a pooper, a scooper. Mm -hmm. We've done all of the good and the bad. But you know what? You, my grandfather Giuseppe Salerno used to go and to test the You can't look up a dead horse's ass. They're dead. Sure. On the past is gone. So, thank you, boy. That was fun. And it made us famous. And this is such an honor to talk to you about this. And, and you know something, Tim? I've used this in many... My, our grandmother, Tessie, Teresa, she would sit in this chair, and she could pull anything out of her cleavage. A meal, a car, everything was always <laughs> in there. And she said something to us once. The love in your heart wasn't put there to stay because love isn't love until you give it away. And I think this new Hudson Brother adventure is going to be us giving it away in a brand new forum. And, lo I and loving every minute of it. Yeah. And hopefully I'll still get to stand in the middle. <laughs> no, we're going to have to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.
Wait, now you go see us. I'll be facing the other way, knowing my brother. Right, exactly. <laughs> I will go first, if you don't mind. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Brett Hudson, and I'm one of the Hudson brothers, and I'm in the zone with Tim and Joan. Thank you. Bill? Hi, I'm Bill Hudson, one of the Hudson brothers, and I'm in the zone with Tim and Joan. Mark? Hi, this is Mark Hudson, the good-looking Hudson brother, and no, I'm not. I'm in the zone with Tim and Joan. Okay, and now one more all together, we are, and then in the zone with Tim and Joan. Go ahead. Ready? Yep. Are we saying hi? hi. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Ready? Hi. We're the Hudson Brothers, and we're, we're in the zone, zone with Tim and Joan. You want to do it with us, Mark? Yeah, do it one more time. Someone give Jesus. A I was, I was, what, a brain fart? Hi. Okay, I got it. I'm, I'm good. Here we go. Okay, ready? Hi. Hi. We're the, the Mark. God, you, it's audio. You, 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 I you, can you no. hear it? Maybe it's because of the distance. I was completely with you guys. Do it again. Okay. Here we go. Hi. We're the Hudson Brothers. And you're in the zone. No, Brad. You're in the zone with Tim and Joan. And we're? Oh, yeah. It would be Yeah, it would be. Yeah. It's all the three of us. Oh, I fucked up. Oh, we Okay. Here we go. Tim, you should put that out. It's probably funnier. I will use it as a drop, but go ahead and do the last one. Good. Are you ready? Ready? Are you ready, Mark? Yes. Hi. Hi. We're the we're Hudson. Hudson. No, no. We're Hi, the, we're the Hudson, Hudson brothers. Brother. I forgot who the fuck we were. Oh, <laughs> oh, really? Come on. Like you've never made a mistake. I One, have. two. <laughs> Here we go. Nobody gets that. Ready? What? Guess what? Two. Anyway, you ready? Yeah. Hi. We're, we're the, Hudson the Hudson brothers, brothers. and you're we're in the zone, zone with Tim and Joan. Boom. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. It has been a trip and a pleasure, and I will remember it for the rest of my life. This was so freaking cool. So you you. guys have a good rest of the week. Uh, Happy post-4th of July, and uh, peace and love, brother. And we'll see you around when you end up. I'm ghost in the night. I'm Mexicans crossing the border. There you go. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Thank you, guys. Bye.